Welcome back to another Star Mini Gaming YouTube video. And again, we are in the Rebel Tactics Week. Uh, in this video, we are covering the Z95 Headhunter and the Hawk 290, uh, Kyle Katarn's personal ship. We're going to start with the Z95 Headhunter because, as you'll see, it's the one that, at least for me, is much clearer on how to play. So the Z95 Headhunter um, is the, in the story line of Star Wars is the predecessor to the X-Wing. <clears throat> it looks very similar to an X-Wing with its wings uh, locked in a closed flight position. It only has two wings as opposed to the four of the X-Wing. Uh, and in game its stats are pretty similar. Um, it's straight twos across the board. Two attack dice, two defense dice, two hull, two shield. So when compared to the X-Wing it has one less attack die and one less hull. But pretty comparable Otherwise, same target lock and focus abilities. Um, it's it's a it's a pretty decent ship. It it can be really cheap. You can run a bandit squadron pilot for your rebels at only twelve points. So it's it can be a good counter to the imperial tie swarms in terms of bringing your numbers up to help match them. And honestly, that's that's typically what I bring it in my list for. However, my favorite build for it is at its second most expensive pilot. Uh, Lieutenant Blount. Uh, pilot skill 6 and he has the special. When attacking the defender is hit by your attack even if he does not suffer any damage. Now in and of itself you know just with the basic ship doesn't seem like an amazing ability it's like okay big whoop I supposedly hit you. What I like to give him is assault missiles. It's a 5 point upgrade so it's a little bit a little bit pricey but I think with him it's worth it it's one of the few times in the game that I will consistently bring a ship with a secondary um, ordnance weapon. And assault missiles say uh, there are four dice attack at range two to three. Uh, spend your target lock and discard this card to perform this attack. If the attack hits, each other ship at range one of the defender suffers one damage. Now, ordinarily, you think, okay, that's a pretty good ability. You know, if you fire into a cluster of enemy ships. Uh, then you can hit the initial target for whatever you roll and all the other ships suffer one damage which is really good but Lieutenant Blount obviously boosts that effectiveness because once you fire it you can just basically be like okay everyone other than the target automatically take one damage let's see if the target of it actually takes anything because whether or not he hits it's going, it's going to account as having hit and therefore this the little special of the assault missiles will trigger because it says if this attack hits. And I also like to give him for only one point more dead eye which allows him to change the attack target lock of the assault missiles to attack focus. There's two reasons for that. One is in case an enemy is outside of range three when Lieutenant Blount moves so he may focus instead of acquiring the target lock because they're outside of his target lock range or um, if he already has established a target lock that way he can focus um, before he fires and this allows him to keep the target lock to reroll any dice that he might want to when firing the assault missiles so as you can see 23 points is a little bit pricey for a ship that's not amazing but I think with the potential damage output of the assault missiles I think he's I think he's well worth it and depending on your build and now we come to one of my other favorite characters from the expanded universe second only to Corrin Horn Kyle Katarn from the uh, Jedi Knight series of video games uh, I grew up playing Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast on my GameCube and absolutely loved it and fell in love with the character so in the game the Hawk 290 is not it's not a powerful ship, obviously. It has one attack die, two evasion dice, four hull, which isn't bad, and only one shield. And it's not particularly fast, as you can see here on its uh, movement dial. But that's okay, because the Hawk 290 really, you will never field it as an offensive um you know, powerhouse. It's never going to be an X-Wing or a B-Wing or an E-Wing or anything like that. You fill the Hawk 290 purely in a support role. I like to fill the Hawk 290 in the best support 
role, in my opinion, is with Kyle Katarn piloting it at a base of 21 points. It only has two actions, focus and target lock, but you'll see that you really only ever focus with this thing. Kyle Katarn's ability is, at the start of the combat phase, you may assign one of your focus tokens to another friendly ship at range 1 to 3. And you might ask, well, why does it specify one of your focus tokens? Well, that's because with the useful builds of it, you're going to have more than one focus token on this ship almost at all times. You, If you're going to fill the ship, you need to take the Hawk 290 upgrade title, the Moldy Crow, which says during the end phase, do not remove unused focus tokens from your ship. So basically, you're able to build up focus tokens over successive turns and then dish them out or use them um, with Kyle on his ship whenever you need it. it. It is a little bit hefty for an upgrade. It brings Kyle to 24 points before you even give him any offensive capability. I like to give him the ion cannon turret so that he can uh, ionize enemy ships, and that gives him not a lot of offensive firepower in terms of damage output, but it at least gives him a good support fire role. Again, it's 5 points, so... You know, with the Moldy Crow and that, you're looking at 29 points before anything else. But if you're fielding the Moldy Crow, the one big drawback is that it is a very points-heavy support ship that will never do much damage in any way. But um, in larger points games, beyond 100 to 150 is typically where I find that Kyle kind of earns his points. And in those games, I like to give him a shield upgrade, which is another four points. So, again, this is getting really steep really fast. And I like to give him Wingman, um, which says, at the start of the combat phase, remove one stress token from another friendly ship at range one, simply because it's boosting his support capabilities even more. Um, it's only two points for Wingman, and you're already paying a lot for Kyle on the upgrades. So anything else that you can do to just make him that much more effective in boosting the army around him uh, is is well worth it in my opinion and then finally the the ship has a single crew slot and this is where it becomes really difficult for me in terms of deciding which which crew to give him um if you want to go by the backstory of it, Jan Ors is the best is the best choice. She's his co-pilot and um, and is with him in all the games. And her special says once per round, when a friendly ship at range one to three performs a focus action or would be assigned a focus token, you may assign that ship an evade token instead. So obviously, she's designed to pair with Kyle's ability to take his focus tokens that he generates. And either to, when he generates one um, for that turn, he can instead make it an evade token to make himself slightly more survivable. Or he can instead, when he's giving a friendly ship a focus token, give them an evade token. So obviously the synergy is there, and it just boosts his ability to support allied ships. Now the only reason that this isn't an auto-include for me with Kyle is these other two ones. Uh, the ship whenever you buy it comes with the recon specialist crew which says when you perform a focus action assign one additional focus token to your ship so you assign two instead of one that's normally not super useful on other ships but on Kyle with the moldy crow it's really good because it allows you to build up your focus tokens twice as fast because you're generating two per turn which is nice once you really get stuck into combat especially if you get stuck into combat really early because you fly forward quickly, or your opponent does, or a combination of the two. It allows, since you're generating two focus tokens per turn, it means that you'll never really be depleted too much because you can always use one for yourself and one for an ally every single turn you'll have enough. The other crew that I sometimes like to assign with Kyle is Lando Calrissian, who comes in the Millennium Falcon pack, I believe. Um, and his special is you spend an action and you roll two defense dice. For each focus result, you assign one focus token to your ship. For each evade result, you assign one evade token to your ship. Now, I don't think that this is the most useful application of Lando. I think there are other ships that he fits on better, but I do think it's a good option if you don't mind taking a bit of a risk. 
and if you um, are planning on getting Kyle stuck in pretty close, especially with that ion cannon turret, because it allows him to potentially generate two evade results, two evade tokens for himself um, each turn, or uh, potentially the two focus results that a recon specialist would um, be able to drum up, or he can fo potentially get a focus and an evade and assign the focus to a friendly or keep it for himself if he needs it for defensive purposes as well, and an evade. There's obviously a pretty big variance of what all you can get. So I know that video is a little bit longer than some of the others. Like I said, the Moldy Crow is a ship that I still haven't really figured out how I like to fly it. It's a, it's a points-heavy investment if you want to field it beyond bare bones to make it truly effective in its support role and to maximize its survivability so it can actually fill that support role because after you've played a few games opponents will probably get annoyed at Kyle handing out those free focus tokens to your other ships and blow him up rather quickly at least that's what tends to happen in our games but uh, stay tuned for the next video in this rebel series and we're going to be focusing on the very speedy A-wings that I used to hate, but have definitely stolen my heart in this game. Until next time, happy gaming.